thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, today we're going to be talking about positioning your MSP for growth in 2024. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, so just do a quick intro here. Uh, my name is Hunter Nelson. I'm the president and founder of Tortoise and Hare uh, Software. Uh, back in 2009, I got my IT degree at Florida State. Um, spent about 10 years in the tech industry, half of those as a marketing or as an analyst working on uh, marketing software products, doing configurations and implementations, and five years as a .NET developer. Got an MBA in there in 2017 and then launched uh, Tortoise and Hare in 2018 um, and have been doing online marketing for various companies ever since and have recently narrowed down to the MSP sector. Um, so who will benefit from this webinar? Um, so MSPs with an kind of undefined marketing strategy that want to define a clearer path to move forward. Uh, and MSPs that are doing something that might not be working very well and are seeking to make a pivot and uh, again, you know, move forward with a clearer path. Um, so I wanted to start the webinar off by kind of talking about uh, some fundamental business strategies. Um, and at kind of the most basic level, there's really two different uh, business strategies. There's a cost leadership strategy and a differentiation strategy. Um, so cost leadership sort of strategies are uh, aimed at reducing the cost to deliver services and using those uh, cost savings and passing them on to the customer with the end goal of basically being the lowest priced uh, provider within the market. Um, to do this requires a high volume, high percentage of market share and a lower touch sales process, uh, highly refined business processes and service delivery. Um, so think kind of like Microsoft you know, 365 or like Walmart. You know, Microsoft 365 is probably one of the most common ones in the MSP space that people could think about. It's, you know, 12 to $25 a month. It's, you know, crazy cheap. And then you get a whole host of um, pretty high, highly valuable software, um, which is remarkable for the price point. And the only way that really works is to have, again, that super high volume, low touch self service pro. Uh, pr sales process, um, those highly refined processes, service delivery, things like that. Uh, the other fundamental business strategy is a differentiation strategy, and that's where you seek to do things differently. Um, you increase value to the customer via uh, scarcity or rarity uh, in your market positioning, and that kind of rarity or that scarcity allows you to charge a premium for um, services. And, you know, kind of a good example of that in the MSP space is to think about uh, the MSP to MSSP evolution, where, you know, now there's uh, MSPs that focus only on security. So they're, you know, managed security service providers. Um, and a differentiation strategy is what we'll be uh, focusing on today and what MSPs typically want to think about um, just because uh, going with a cost leadership strategy is something that usually uh, requires a lot of funding, a lot of time and patience to uh, go without revenue, and uh, there's often, you know, venture capital people that will allow you to operate as kind of a revenue list or, uh, you know, losing money sort of situation in the attempts uh, to capture a large segment of the market um, and then kind of come back in later and turn the business profitable. Uh, most MSPs aren't started that way uh, and that doesn't describe them. It would also be really hard to do given the competition level in the MSP uh, space. Um, so thinking more kind of about differentiation and you know why it's really a good idea for MSPs. Aside from the you know fact that cost leadership approaches are perilous to small businesses and um, you know typically not a good fit, uh, a differentiation strategy has a lot of advantages for an MSP. 
Um, one of those is that it's easier and cheaper to market and sell. Uh, a lot of uh, MSP owners will grow to a certain size through networking and referrals without actually doing a, you know, a formal marketing and sales program and really underestimate the difficulty and expense that uh, creating a formalized marketing and sales effort uh, takes. And differentiation allows you to reduce those costs and be a lot more efficient uh, just because you're, you know, focusing your marketing efforts, you're um, speaking directly towards a certain you know, type of people that have a are craving a certain value proposition. Uh, it's also easier and cheaper to service your customers, uh, and it's easier to hire and train. You know, these things are kind of related. Uh, you know, I think a lot of techs and um, people that work at MSPs will uh, kind of tell you that the the mind tearing of switching from industry to industry and technology to technology uh, can be a little bit of a a strain. And you know, understanding the various applications and uh, needs of customers in different industries uh, can be a struggle and lead to burnout and turnover and difficulty in onboarding and you know all the various challenges that a lot of gener generalist MSPs face. Uh, when you have a, a differentiating um, differentiated MSP, this just becomes a lot more easier. Uh, to tackle because you can develop expertise within your chosen niche or within your you know market positioning, which allows you to again make it uh, easier to service your customers, easier to hire and train new people because you you have more purpose with who you're hiring and training. Uh, it's easier to onboard those people and get them up to speed, uh, and you know that also uh, comes with less expense. You know, with these two things kind of combined, then it just becomes overall easier to scale your revenues and maintain profitability as you grow. Um, you know, it's it's harder to run a kind of bigger business um, than a smaller business with certain um, you know challenges and that fragmentation and those uh, switching between industries and technologies and um, trying to find people to you know fill the gaps and you know get penetration in various industries with your marketing and sales just becomes more difficult. So it's easier to scale revenues and maintain profitability by going with a differentiated strategy, uh, which allows you to command a higher multiple at the time you sell your MSP. And it also makes your business more durable. Um, you now there's been a kind of a slowdown in tech over the past 12, 16 months. Um, and I've definitely seen uh, niche focused businesses uh, have a lot more success during kind of this downturn because they're, you know, uh, as customers get more thoughtful in the way they purchase, uh, they really want to make sure they're engaging with providers that are, um, you know, more of a sure thing. And when customers, you know, see you as a niche provider that more uh, accurately meets their services, they're more likely to um, choose you over in a competitive scenario which, you know, in the a downturn, it makes your business much more durable. Uh, all right, um, so ways for MSPs to differentiate. Uh, you know, the most common way that I see MSPs differentiating is by uh, location. And, you know, location is somewhat of a weak positioning. Um, it you know, does have its benefits, can work, um, you know, but as the world has become more distributed, re remote work has been more accepted, um, you know, the need for a provider to come on site and, you know, do things, you know, manly, manually in person has diminished. Location has become even more of a, you know, kind of weak position. Um, it's also typically very competitive. Um, there's nothing to stop five, 10, 20, or even more MSPs all claiming that they service a single city. And then you're right back to having uh, diffi difficulty standing out within your market. So um, usually if you're gonna go with a location-based strategy, you know, you have to narrow it down to something more specific, like a specific neighborhood, um, you know, which limits your market size, may or may not be a problem. Uh, but, you know, you can't have some element of a location positioning, but then you also should combine that with another differentiating factor. Um, and
So we'll cover some of the other differentiating uh, kind of factors here. Uh, another one is by industry. So you can, you know, be an MSP that services lawyers or CPAs or financial advisors. Um, and I've definitely seen this uh, industry focus be uh, much more kind of uh, fruitful, uh, you know, firsthand. Um, then kind of the other uh, way you can kind of differentiate your MSP is via a horizontal positioning, uh, and that can be like uh, by technology. So for instance, you know, this is very, you know, more common in the MSP space, but supporting only Microsoft uh, sort of devices or people that have Microsoft, you know, 365, but there's, you know, certainly room for other MSPs, and I see these more rarely, to be a Google Workspace oriented MSP. You know, so you support businesses that use Google Workspace as their um, kind of primary business uh, applications or, you know, supporting Apple devices and, and their set of uh, products. You can also position horizontally ac across a a uh, more broad functional area, such as uh, cloud, where you're more of a cloud managed service provider, and then focusing on, uh, you know, all either all three or you know narrowing focus down to either Azure or Google Cloud Platform or AWS. Um, you know, you can uh, narrow down as a functional area um, in kind of a what some MSPs might consider a co-managed basis, but you know you can kind of go on. You know, all in on a that functional area being like cybersecurity, which is kind of how the MSSP has evolved. Uh, you could provide only help desk type uh, and like first level support as your, you know, MSP's positioning. Um, you can do only backups in DR. Um, so there's you know a lot of different ways you can kind of slice up and get more focused with your um, MSP's positioning. Um, you know. You can also um, position based off some po points of value to the customer, but these are really kind of like a further refinement of um, a, an initial positioning. So for instance, if you are a MSP that only focuses on lawyers, usually that will narrow down to where you are in an oligopolistic competitive scenario um, where you, instead of having, you know, 100,000 MSPs that you're competing with, uh, you know, you're, you've narrowed it down to 10, 15, 20, things like that, um, or even fewer direct com competitors, uh, depending on some of your primary positioning elements. Um, and then within that sort of positioning, you can kind of almost narrow your differentiators down further uh, with some of these points of value to the customer. Um, so you can, you know, have differentiate on your brand um, and you know branding one of the best ways to uh, think about branding is like how easy it is for people to remember your business when they have a time of need um, and you know in today's society we also demand speed um, so you can definitely kind of put within your positioning your messaging um, you know things like ease of purchase, how easy it is to, um, you know, buy or engage, your speed of onboarding, your customer service, like your response times, um, your privacy, your safety, security. Um, you know, if you think about like Apple is a, does this really well uh, within the Apple and the Android kind of battles uh, that go on at the, in the cell phone. Um, you know, there's that's an oligopolistic sort of scenario where there's two or three like main competitors that fight within the market for market share and Apple has position within, you know, that um, market as the the privacy vendor, you know, the ones that takes uh, privacy more seriously. Um, so again, some of these like uh, points of value to the customer uh, elements are things that are more of a, a secondary positioning or differentiating factor, um, but they uh, definitely can contribute to your overall messaging and positioning. Um, so thinking about your developing your own differentiators and positioning with the market, um, you know, I've got a couple uh, brainstorming questions for you to think about if you're looking to refine the focus of you know your MSP. Um, you know, the first is if if your company could be known for one thing and one thing only, you know, what would it be? Um, 
you know, do you want to be thought of as the, you know, foremost uh, leader within cybersecurity? Uh, do you want to know how, do you want people to think of you as somebody who knows how to scale law firms with technology? Um, you know, so what is, what is that one thing you could be known for? Um, because, you know, realistically, whether you want to or not, a lot of people will, you know, throw you into a single bucket for, you know, what you're known for. Um, so you should control the narrative on what that is um, and be more purposeful, you know, with your messaging um, and those efforts. Um, you can also kind of look and say, like, what does my MSP's customer concentration look like? And you can kind of look at this from a few angles, like, you know, frequency, like how many uh, customers do I have in like a specific vertical or a specific set of overlapping needs? You know, whether that's, you know, like, oh, we have, you know, 40, 50 percent of our customers are all, you know, financial services companies or financial advisors. Um, you know, but then we've got, uh, you know, 40 percent of our revenue, though, comes from CPAs. And that's like the biggest contributor to revenue because they spend more or they're higher, you know, volume businesses or things like that. Um, you know, you can also look at this from a ease of service perspective, like, you know, oh, we've got these customers, we've got a lot of these customers, we've got a lot of and these customers give us more revenue, but we really want to get more of these because they're so easy to service and that makes our lives easier. Um, you know, so you have to kind of like, you know, take a uh, you look at this from several different angles and um, then you can kind of ask like, what does my team excel at? And try and get between that like almost Venn diagram of like what the market wants versus like what your MSP is, is good at and can provide um, and get three to five options together um, for, you know, how you would like position your MSP or you know, developing a more differentiated business strategy. Um, and um, I went through this like exercise recently um, in looking at sort of narrowing the focus of uh, Tortoise and Hare as an agency down a little bit further. Uh, and I thought it was helpful and kind of wanted to share it in this webinar here. Um, but it's like a niche grader work worksheet. Um, so we had a, initially a focus of broader B2B tech marketing um, and worked primarily with like MSPs, SaaS, and cybersecurity. Uh, this year, I looked at some, um, you know, narrowing uh, focus down even further and kind of went through this uh, exercise where you, you know, once you've got your brainstorming ideas together, you kind of compare them at a more, you know, numerical level and uh, which can kind of like reveal um, a choice forward for you as an option. Um, you know, think about, do you have experience in this niche? Do you have connections? Do you are you really good at servicing it? Like, you know, do you understand all this, the dental software? Does your team understand all the, um, does it have vendor relationships uh, with, uh, you know, legal software vendors that you can, you know, streamline the implementation and delivery uh, for your customers? Um, you know, think, can, can you really like reach this niche easily? You know, again, this comes back to your network and your company's assets. Um, do you already have search engine traffic that's, you know, coming to like blog posts that allows you to reach this niche e easily? You know, are you already a member of professional networking associations that are going well? You know, you know, think about how easily it is to like, you know, feasibly reach this niche on a consistent basis. Um, and then this one's kind of like, a, do they have compelling problems, opportunities that you need to solve? Um, you know, does does working with that, you know, that particular niche excite your team? Is that's is that going to keep your employees happy by like focusing on that particular niche? Um, you know, is the niche willing to spend money, or is it just a constant battle on you know beating them up on rates? They're paying their invoices too late, or you know just constantly negotiating, you know, or is this you know somebody who's just uh, signs the check and is, you know, always looking for, you know, more ways to improve their business, views you as a trusted advisor and is willing to, you know, spend more on cybersecurity or things like that to um, get their problem solved. Um, you know, is your, you know, prospective positioning, is that is that niche large enough to support your business? Um, 
you know, it's it's tough to find a niche that's too small to to support a uh, Sorry, my head seat keeps turning off. Is you know, it's kind of difficult to find a niche that's too small to support a business that most people are happy with these days. Um, but it all depends on your goals. So is that positioning a, a viable um, strategy from a, a size of the market standpoint? And then um, this one is kind of like more looking at the competitors with that within that market. Like, do you have the ability to really like dominate that target niche, move up into like one of those oligopolistic type competitors where you're going to be one of the top three choices in market and, um, you know, be a real player in that niche? Can you get to that point by like entering that particular vertical? Um, and then do you have the ability to generate re repeat business or is this going to be just one and done's when you burn through that whole you know market or you know is that going to be tough to continue to find sustainable sources of revenue and then just kind of like grading these on your you know one to ten scales and then adding up the totals um and that can give you like a um you know more objective uh way to uh grade or like a make a more um unbiased uh, choice, or at least kind of give you some unbiased, you know, visibility of the options within your kind of brainstorming subset. And then that's a good way to kind of, you know, reveal what might be a solid path for you um, on your differentiating uh, and positioning choices. Um, one thing that we do at Tortoise and Hare in kind of like helping advise people on strategy is look at like search engine traffic um and difficulty of like reaching uh customers via search engine traffic both from a cost of pay-per-click um ability to rank for keywords volume of keywords that people are searching for within a specific niche um, and that can kind of help uh, answer questions around like um both like the ability to dom dominate the target niche and how easily you can reach that niche um but uh you know just doing this high level brainstorming exercise um and then doing like a little bit of a niche creator works worksheet can at least give you like um some visibility into what options you should explore further before like committing to a direction um once you have uh kind of positioned your msp chosen that kind of how you want to differentiate um you know now what uh you know, next steps are to align your branding, align your messaging, your pricing, your resources, and you know get your uh, business choices swimming in the wrong or in the right direction towards your strategy. Um, and this is like a step that is frequently missed. Like you know a lot of um, you know MSPs uh, might say they have a strategy, but they're not necessarily aligning their uh, resources towards like moving towards it. Um, I see this a lot of times in pricing, you know, a lot of times uh, MSPs want to charge more uh, if they are a premium provider that has like, you know, you should really get an understanding of like how rare your services are and how valuable you um, are to your customers and then price accordingly. Um, you know, niche customers should be pricing above that market average uh, rates. Um, and people that don't have strong positioning are more locally focused or generalist MSPs should be closer to market rates or maybe even a little bit below. Um, you know, develop personas to help um, get more clear on who you want to reach. Uh, and I got kind of a little um, persona sheet that I helped dev uh, develop for one of the clients over here called Marty Manager. You know, he's a, a profile of a you know, ambiguous IT manager who's one of the customer buying profiles. You know, 48 year 48 year old male who's a parent, top 30% earner, um, college education, uh, usually like overworked, kind of burned out, an organizational fo focal point, um, introverted, so likes but likes to vent. You know, gotta listen to their uh, frustrations. They really appreciate that from a sales standpoint um may not necessarily be up to speed to you know technically due to a you know kind of a siloed work work environment they might be the only it person in the company um so you know needs education wants to do better uh, motiv their motivations are 
you know, accomplish more with limited resources, increase personal productivity. Um, and like just developing kind of like a persona like this um, can help you guide your content marketing efforts and guide your advertising campaigns and you know reach the customer profiles more effectively and when you've um, really chosen good uh, positioning you can get a better understanding of your customers and you know who they are to create these um, personas and get a better understanding of their content preferences and their contact triggers and things like that um, you know you also need to develop an elevator pitch um, you know positioning script and like really like narrow down your messaging um, and once you've got that, you need to, sh you know, share, share, share it, uh, make sure it's on social media, but also be communicating it internally to your team and your stakeholders to just, you know, make sure that people know what you can do for them. Um, and that is it for today. Uh, pretty short and sweet. Um, if you need help defining your positioning or executing a transition, uh, definitely reach out to us and uh, we can talk about how we might be able to assist you. Um, and aside from that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here. And if anybody has any questions, happy to answer those. If not, uh, feel free to drop off.